Hi guys, welcome back. This is Walisa from Alive Refurbished. And in today's furniture transformation, I'm taking this beautiful antique buffet side table. The finish looks so sad and beat up, but I'm gonna be getting rid of all of that. So don't go anywhere and stick around for today's farmhouse style furniture transformation. Oops, I did it again. I walked out of the thrift store with this beauty. How do you turn down a one-of-a-kind piece that will most likely end up in the trash unless someone is willing to put in the work? And that person needs me. Is the original finish failing? Yes. Does it need repairs? Absolutely. Does it need different hardware because the original is incomplete? You bet. Do I want to challenge myself for a bare wood look on this? Yes, because why wouldn't I? Whatever hardware I choose for it needs to be similar in both size and style to the original because I don't want to drill any new holes since I'm going for the bare wood look. I wish all of the hardware was there, but I think I'm going to have to order a set of four because it's going to be pretty, pretty tough to find two more that are identical. It's a bummer because look how gorgeous they are. I'm like drooling here. I love them so much. On my quest to finding it, I use Google Lens, which is a visual search tool available through Google, and I'm going to show you how I searched it. From Google, you want to click on this camera icon. Have the option to scan whatever object you want to find. I ended up finding mine over on eBay, and that's how I got a hold of the hardware I'm using for the makeover. So it's pretty unfortunate, but there's a big piece on this side missing. So I think I'm gonna have to compromise and just remove the piece altogether and leave it as is. I feel like this piece already has enough detail in it that I don't think is gonna be a big thing that I remove that. And yeah, I, I, I like it. It's still beautiful, don't you think? I'm hoping for a natural finish on this. I'm so excited. When you buy a piece that's old and beat up like this one, you get a good amount of sticky grime that needs to be removed before the sander pushes it into the wood grain. I'm using simple grain and a scraper for the thick, grimy areas, and I'm scrubbing the dust off that settles into any groove, which this piece has quite a bit of grooves in it. As I was removing the drawers, I started looking underneath and I'm having a flashback from last week's video. Two things happen or notice when I was cleaning it is that this piece um, just came off. I think something happened a while back with this drawer divider. Um, and now, of course, it's broken and it just won't hold it. I have to glue and I'm probably going to have to add a piece of wood here to keep these in place. The other thing I've noticed is that the drawers here are getting really worn out with the stop. So I think I'm gonna repair that as well yeah, to make sure it lasts for a good chunk of time. The drawer sides had some crusty stuff in them that I'd scraped off and I could see that there were some new nails that indicated that there was some repair done but there's still a gap between the front of the drawer and this bottom so what I'm doing is I'm trying to loosen that bottom to see if I can push it forward to get rid of the gap. The fact that the bottom is not pushed forward all the way doesn't affect the structure or stability of the piece. It's more like an aesthetic thing. I really don't like how it looks, so I'm gonna try and do my best to get rid of it. After trying a couple different things, I started noticing a tiny crack and that's when I decided to stop. I'm gonna have to think outside a box on this one so that I can't see that gap anymore because it just bothers me. Another thing about this beautiful buffet table is that the wood grain had a lot of texture and the grain was deep. As I started sanding with 120 grit, some of the dark finish was left behind. I switched to an 80 grit, which is coarser, and it will go deeper in the wood. Afterwards, I'll come back with 120 grit to smooth any marks left by the rougher abrasive and smooth my surface. There are a lot of 90 degree angles right here and so I'm removing the finish with a carbide scraper which fits perfect here. I'm not even sure if my surf prep is going to be able to fit to help me sand the rest of the finish. Just a quick reminder that when you use the scraper in the opposite direction of the wood grain, be very mindful and careful. Don't put too much pressure because this will damage the wood.
both the inside and outside of each drawer were sanded and I left the trickiest parts for last such as the details on this drawer. Despite being really careful and using my bendable abrasive to sand the carved wood details, they broke. But let's not panic because it was kind of a blessing. With these pieces gone, I could reach the center of the drawer better and besides, I'm gonna glue those pieces back. After they broke off, I tried sanding each piece by hand but it was so hard getting that finish off so this is what I, I put did. all the broken pieces on top of a aluminum foil piece use citrus strip in the sprayable I form I not recommend using it on a larger area at least in my experience it's not very effective but I just spray those small pieces and this morning I'm gonna show you a close-up I have triple zero steel wool that I soaked in mineral spirits let's start scrubbing but the reason why i wrap the pieces in aluminum foil is to prevent the furniture stripper from drying out which that was my experience when i used it in the past it was just drying out too soon and not doing what it was supposed to do at all in these small areas and details um i'm actually giving it a thumbs up and to remove any residue left by the chemical stripper, I'm spraying a little bit of this finishing cleaner and wiping it off. And yes, my friend, there is still a little bit of sanding left to do, especially in all of the grooves and the little details. So you guys know I usually love these sanding grips. They really get into all those tight spaces. And I've also been using and loving this micro tool that's spongy from Gator. It does a really good job getting into all the crevices. So there are some spots that are quite tricky to sand and I'm gonna try and see if I can unscrew the top. That way it'll give me access here. It doesn't look too bad, so I'm not gonna fit again. But these screws aren't as tight as the ones from two weeks ago, so maybe I can use a screwdriver. <laughs> Please. So far it looks promising. Gonna take a little Remember the extension from last video? I'm using it again today. <laughs> I'm so thankful for that extension, let me tell you. Before tackling a few repairs, I'm cleaning the dust off with a mineral spirits alternate and doing a final rinse with water. Remember that piece that detached? So add some glue to it and put it back in place. I want a lot of glue actually. Oof. As it turns out, I needed more glue for this repair. I also added a small piece of wood to keep the drawer divider from sliding across and it would just keep it a little bit tighter into place. i a trick I learned from another fellow refinisher. First, let me clarify that this was just a shallow crack. It wasn't deep. So all you do is pour a little bit of glue over it. Make sure that the glue seeps through the crack. Remove the axis and then sand right away and you're gonna see the crack disappear before your eyes. And to glue back those small wooden pieces that had broken off, I used this instant glue. Since this adhesive takes 30 minutes to dry, I just put a piece of tape over the wooden pieces and while that dries, I'm gonna be adding some bandle to the bottom or the drawer to fill in that groove that was created by the drawer steps. To make sure that the groove was filled up all the way, I ended up doing two rounds of bundle repair. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm hoping that by using this quick wood epoxy that dries in a neutral color both on this deep ding in the middle of the top and the holes left on the legs when the wood appliques were removed that my repairs will be discreet. I sanded all the repairs, cleaned my piece and then finally got to priming using this clear shellac. Applied two coats and then scuff sanded, getting my surface ready to do a color wash. Before applying the color wash, I'm gonna be scuff sanding with a 220 grit just to get rid of any sheen from the shellac. Today's painting day, which is the most exciting day of it all because after all those hours prepping, making the repairs, this is the fun part. I'm gonna be using this neutral color from Fusion Mineral Paint called Algonquin. I'm going to dilute one part paint to three parts water to make this watery consistency blend. Just to tone down these orange colors and make it look very natural, which is such a trendy finish nowadays. Before I forget, you're also gonna need a wet rag to wipe off that color wash. Even though this is paint, it applies like a stain. So we can actually say that we're gonna stain the wood. We're not really going to paint it. Um, if you don't like getting too messy, you can wear some gloves because you will get messy with this technique. Wipe down to get rid of the sanding dust and color wash. Here we go. Usual reminders for this technique is to use long brush strokes. Wiping, just barely touching my surface. To get the tone in the wood that I was looking for, I ended up applying three rounds of this color wash. Since the weather was ideal for applying this technique, I only waited half hour between rounds. But if you're doing this technique on a hot and humid day, then you might want to wait at least one hour between the first round and the next. minute decision to add a little bit of warmth to the finish with mud slide from only one paint i'm gonna miss my surface first this will allow the stain to glide better it just gives me more workability so and add a little bit of warmth and when you first apply it it's gonna look quite dark but as the stain dries its color will get lighter when you apply a darker finish over a lighter one this is gonna create more depth and i just love when that happens stain goes into the grooves it just highlights the wood so beautiful almost to the end i'm just wiping down the sideboard with a tack cloth to make sure that there is no dust and then i applied three coats of top coat to protect the new finish remember that gap that was inside the drawer i ended up adding a piece of trim to cover it up and then i lined the inside of the drawer with some pretty paper i can't wait to show you but first let's take a quick look at our rough beginning and this is our piece today. Please let me know what you guys think of this transformation in the comments. I'm eager to read you. I couldn't be more excited about today's results. I will see you guys next time.